in this nitty gritty let's play live stream we're going to be playing american mahjong at mahjong time if you've not tried playing at mahjong time yet look for my email in the video description below send me an email and i can send your information on their 30-day vip trial i'm an affiliate partner there so if you decide to create a membership i will get a small commission and i thank you for your support Today's topic is calculating risks. It's an advanced topic. So if you are a beginner, welcome, but buckle up because it's going to be packed with a powerful set of tactics. If you're an intermediate player on a fast track or if you're an advanced player, I hope you enjoy this content. Please let me know what you think in the video description below or in chat. Incidentally, this content is from my new book on strategy that I hope to release sometime this month. So I hope you enjoy this sneak peek. I want to say thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Channel members, thank you so much for supporting Maj Life. And moderators, thank you for helping monitor chat. Today's format is nitty gritty. So we're going to keep the socialization to nil. We're going to focus on the topic of calculating risks and gameplay with commentary only. Thanks for being here. Welcome. No worries, Evelyn. I'm going to open my video or video, my my presentation. Okay, let's see. All right, we're ready here. So let me share my screen. Oh, wait, I need to get it up there. Hold on one second. Okay, here it is, calculating risks. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Oh no, that's not the right one. Okay, live. Okay, why is, why is my iPad not catching up to me here? Uh, let's see, Mosh Life Live. What? Home. Oh, there we go. Uh, let's see. Okay. Mosh. All right. I can hear myself, so I know we're good. All right. Here we go. Calculating risks. Everybody ready? Everybody buckled in? All right, here we go. The first thing that I want to share is FOMO. Have you heard of FOMO before? FOMO is the fear of missing out. In urban slang, it's the anxiety that an exciting or interesting event may currently be happening elsewhere. And you have this fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. That can apply to Mahjong. In Mahjong, fear of missing out is the anxiety of losing jokers in an early exposure or anxiety that opportunities for hand development may be missed due to inaction. We have FOMO in Mahjong. So we're going to talk about how to accept or cope with FOMO by way of calculating risks. Calculating risk is that you consider a risk basically is that you consider worth taking this risk because the result, if it is successful, will be so good or too good to pass up. So between FOMO and calculated risks, 
you can find a comfortable spot. Don't calculate risk based on fear of missing out. Instead, calculate risk based on intel gathered by reading the room. We're going to talk about how to do that now. Everything that we're going to share is framed by Hop Toys Strategy by Wall. The initial Strategy by Wall was introduced by Tom Sloper. So I want to give him a shout out and thank him. Thanks, Tom, for Strategy by Wall because that is really the first strategy that I adopted when I first learned how to play American Mahjong. And I have taken that concept and added my own tactics. And that's why I title this Hop Toys Strategy by Wall, because I beefed it up. The first part of the game is the preliminary. So if you're looking at a bird's eye view of a table, that would be the first wall. East rolls the dice to break the wall. They push out the wall and deal the, the tiles are distributed to the players. So that's the preliminary. The first wall goes away. And the second wall, a short wall, remains once the tiles are in everybody's hand. Then we have the Charleston. This is a pregame or uh, the Charleston. This is where you can exponentially improve your dealt hand by making good decisions, hopefully, so that you can set yourself up for success going into the pick and discard phase of the game. The begin game is that second wall, the short wall. The middle game is the third wall. The fourth wall would be the end game. So we have a begin game being the second wall, middle game being the third wall, end game being the fourth wall. So everything we talk about is going to be based on the wall in play. It allows you to compartmentalize tactics and you can pace yourself in the game. I want to talk about hand development first. When you first get your dealt hand, you're going to target the strength of the hand and you're going to choose a category that uses most of the remaining tiles. So you're going to get supporting tiles for the strength, whether the strength of the hand be a multiple or a predominant pattern. It just really depends on the tiles that you're dealt. That's part of the luck in the game. There, there's really two elements of luck in the game. Oh, maybe three, three elements, who you're playing with, the tiles that you're dealt, and then tiles that you pick from the wall. Those are two, at least two things that you cannot control. Many times you can control who you play with unless you're playing in a tournament or in a drop-in game. So you can take that out if you're doing either of those two things. But if you're playing with the same people, there's no luck involved in who you play with because you're playing with the same people and you can get to know those people and you can gather intel based on that, those experiences and use the information to give yourself an advantage at the table. So if you play with a consistent group of people, take that out as part of being luck. So for you, if you play with the same group of people, the luck is the deal and the tiles you pick from the wall, pick by pick. Everything else is going to be about skill, skill and strategy application. So target the strength of the hand. This is the beginning of skill, by the way, skill and tactics, of course. The next thing you're going to do is gather. Gather tiles that can be used regardless of suit. Then you're going to build your multiples. American Mahjong is a game of multiples. At the shallowest end, we have singles and pairs. And then we build from there to bigger multiples, Pung, Kong, Quint. 
And all along the way, you're going to think about defending. So hand development has a process. Target, gather, build, defend. And sometimes you need to refresh. If your tiles go down in the early game, you may need to retarget, regather, rebuild, and defend. So there's sometimes a reassessment that needs to take place, depending on what happens at the table. But basically, this, these are the phases of hand development. We're going to start with the begin game. So this would be, let's see, let me go to the whole, I guess, framework, what you need to do, what kind of a mindset you need to have. And that's going to be your critical thinking skills. You're going to need to use your critical thinking skills. Observe, assess, consider, decide, execute. So when you're first getting your dealt hand and you're playing in the Charleston, you need to be observant with the tiles that are being passed. In the pick and discard phase of the game, you're going to observe discards and monitor exposures. All the way, uh, whether you're in the Charleston or whether you're in the pick and discard phase of the game, you're going to assess what you're seeing and experiencing, and you're going to consider which tactics are going to be best to apply at the moment. You're going to make a decision, and then you're going to execute a plan. That is the process of critical thinking. And this takes practice. Now, when you're playing, you don't think to yourself, okay, observe, assess, consider. Then, you know, you're not going to be thinking this way point by point. It comes naturally. Sometimes you may not think at a deep level with this in mind, but this is that would be where the training comes in. So train yourself to be intentional. Observe the tiles going around in the Charleston survey discards and monitor exposures, make an assessment of what would be the best tactics, make a decision on those tactics, then execute. And eventually that will just all come naturally. When you, after the Charleston, because there's not all, there are some risks that you're going to be taking in the Charleston with passing and with every pass, by the way, typically your passing is going to get more and more risky because hopefully you're developing your hand, which means that your remaining tiles are going to end up being keepers that you've whittled out. So your passing could get more and more risky. So you need to think about risks during the Charleston. But at the moment, we're going to talk right now about the begin game and when the pick and discard phase is happening and we're going to talk about exposures and discards when a discard goes down and you could potentially take it if you know what hand you're playing and you have no gaps and one or no weaknesses you should take it because if you're at that level of hand development you're probably a front runner in the game meaning you're if you picture a race and, and you, there are runners on the track and the runners are pushing themselves in the front. If you know what hand you're playing, you have no gaps and weaknesses, you're going to be one of those front runners. But let's say that you don't know what hand you're playing, or maybe you know what hand you're playing, but you have a gap. You're going to maybe be more of a contender or even an underdog at the back of the pack. So underdog, front, uh, contender, front runner, those are the three positions. And you've got to consider your hand development to place yourself in one of those positions because wherever you are in that those positions is going to be the level, it's going to be proportional to the level of risk that you can take. The other variables that you want to consider would be the phase of the game. 
So right now we're talking about the begin game. <clears throat> you also want to think about the progress of your opponent's hands. This would be where you're monitoring their exposures. Because if somebody has one exposure, they're commi committing somewhat to a hand or at least a category. If they have two exposures, then they're committed to a hand. And typically that's when you can figure out what hand they're playing. And then if they're starting to, let's say, throw jokers, well, then you know they're waiting on a pair. So you can use those tells to determine the progress of their hand development. Also, when you're looking at your own hand, you need to think about your own potential to win. So you want to look at how many picks are remaining in the wall and compare that, excuse me, to how many picks are in your hand. If you have more discards than picks in the wall, you should consider folding. If you have less than the number of discards in your hand compared to the number of picks in the wall, and your tiles are not visible, push to win. That, that fourth bullet is the number of tiles that are out that you need, like discards and exposures. So these are the things that you should consider while you are gathering intel in order to make a decision based on calculated risk. So we're going to look at some examples now. This first one, hold on, I, I need to cough. Uh, hold on, let me mute. So here's an example of a hand. This is right after the Charleston. You can see that we've got winds, northeast, west, south, pair west, or pair east, pair west, pair south. We have five, six, eight, nine dragon, five discards. But we do have a hand with no gaps. We have weaknesses, though. So I would say this hand, for this hand, this player would be an underdog. Five discards. So if you have more than four discards, you would be an underdog. So there are a couple of hands that could be played here. The first line, basically, two hands. There are two weaknesses. Uh, let's see. We have Pung, really, maybe even more than two. Because if we were to, let's say, play the first hand, Kong, Pung, Pung, Kong, we could. I would say there's one weakness here, the, no the north, because you could pung the east, pung the west, and kong the south. The north is the only tile that we would need to build, so that would be one weakness. If You, you could maybe divide this and say the north and south are weaknesses. We still actually, that's why I put two, because the, the south is a pair. If we had another tile in here, it would be much better. But I would say one or two weaknesses here. And we could call for tiles. So at the moment, there are, are no gaps, no, no tiles out. So I would say that our starting position here would be an underdog. And of course, that's our current position because we're just getting started. All right, so let's see what happens with the next screenshot. So we've gone through a round of, of discards, and it looks like we picked up a flower. So now we could potentially play another hand, fifth hand down, under Winds and Dragons. And for this one, we I've added three, three potential hands, the first line, two hands, and then the fifth hand down. We have four discards. I would still say with four discards and options, we're an underdog because if we were to play the fifth hand down, we would have additional discards. We only need uh, one east. No, no, no. We have two west, south, north, flower, four discards and uh, options. I would say we would be maybe a contender if we played with the fifth hand down. The first hand, though, we would still be an underdog. Okay, so let's go and uh, to the next slide and see 
how the hand development progressed. So this would be a, a, another pick has gone by. We, we picked up a joker. Let's see. No, we had a joker already right there. So we, it looks like our first discard that we could call went down. So the, my question to you is, would you take it? And if so, would you Pung or Kong? Feel free to opine in chat if you like. And if you're watching the repost, then just tell yourself out loud what you would do here. I'm pretty sure I take it probably for a Pung. And I do right there, Pung. So we could either still play the first hand. So really our hands goes down to two. So I should update that under hands. And our weakness goes down to goes to one because it looks like we went through a couple rounds of discards and we picked up a south. We have our pair and our single. We need one more flower or joker to take care of that weakness. And we can Kong the South. None of our tiles are out because we have our Pung of West out there. So we have two potential hands and one weakness. So I moved us from underdog to contender. Because right now at 69 tiles, we're still in the middle game. We have only two discards and we have a hand with no gaps and one weakness. Mm -hmm. So your position can change. Now we picked up a joker. So I would say we could still play the first hand and we have now no weaknesses because we can Kong the flower and we can Kong the south. You know what? I need to um I need to close my blinds. Hold on. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. So we're now, I'm saying we're now a front runner also because we're at 65 tiles. So before the middle of the game, the middle of the game is at 60 tiles. So I would say we went from a front, an underdog to a contender to now a front runner because we're good to go. We're set. We have only one discard. Our south goes down, so we're going to Kong. And we ended up drawing our winning tile for Mahjong. And that was, by the way, before the end of the third wall. 59 tiles remaining. So if you can expedite hand development and your choice of hand, so choice of hand will come first, choose a hand that where, where you could expedite if it, if it is possible, be, especially if you're a contender or front runner, because you're likely ahead of the table, your opponents, and you can take risks. The further ahead you are with hand development, the greater risks you can take. And in this case, it panned out because we won. Okay, so now we're going to look at another example during the middle game. So this particular hand development or the the situations that happen really heighten in the middle game so we're starting as an underdog in this one we have one particular hand we could play and i show four five four five as the hand consecutive run number six Four, five, four, five. We're an underdog because we have five discards, but we have a hand with no gaps. Four, five, four, five. We have two weaknesses, and that would be the four crack and the five bam. The four crack needs to be a pung, and the five bam needs to be a kong. So those would be the weaknesses. We need another four crack so we can call, and we need more five bam so we can call there too. So two weaknesses, one of our tiles is out. 
So we're going to need a joker for that five band because we're not ready to call. So we have a hand with no gaps. We have two weaknesses and one of our tiles is already out. Five discards. So we would be an underdog for this game at the moment. So a couple of rounds later, we picked up a five crack. We picked it out of the wall, so we don't have to make an exposure, which is good. And we have four discards after that keeper there. And so our, our hand developed by one tile after one, two, three picks from the wall. So we're in the same situation where we have weaknesses but because we have a Kong in hand and we can use any number of jokers, I would say we could bump ourselves up to contender. We have four discards and we're still in the begin game, 88 tiles remaining. So I would say we could bump up to contender. All right, so we've had a couple of rounds of picking and we have four, five, four, five still as our potential hand. There's actually another hand we could play and that would be three, four, five, three, four, five, mix suit Kongs, or maybe even the Quint if we could get jokers. And the reason I thought maybe the Quint would be a potential is because we have a Quint in hand. All we need to do is draw a joker and we could Kong the or Quint the four and then later pick up another joker for the Quint, but we have a, a weakness and that would be the flowers and the four. So I would still say we're a contender because we've got four, five, four, five to fall back on. So now we have still two potential hands. We have, let's see, we picked up a joker. We could still maybe play the Quint or four, five, four, five. Let's see how many of our tiles are out. We have one five bam. I see two are out. So we would need at least two more jokers for this hand if we played the quint. We have a hand, two, a couple of hands we could play here, and then two weaknesses, and two of our tiles are out. So I need to update tiles out for uh, the two five bams. There's a five bam right there. We drew a flower at this point. So now I'm saying let's commit to a quint. We're going to need a couple more jokers, but now we have a pair of flowers. So I would say for a quint, we would be a contender. We've got one hand to focus on, one weakness with probably the five bam, because we could even Kong that flower there. We need jokers is what we need here. And it looks like we picked up another flower. So now there, the only, there is a weakness here, and that would be, oh, I see. No, we don't need the, the five bam would not be a weakness because if we're playing the quint, it would be with the four bam. So we could quint the four bam. All we need is a joker for the five crack. So no weaknesses. And we're at 47 tiles. We have two, or let's see, three discards three discards, and we have two more picks from the wall. So we're looking pretty good. It looks like we have, uh, let's see here. We picked up another, another joker and discarded. So we have two jokers now. So we can quint the four man. We can use the joker for the five crack. And then we can Kong. We have one discard and we're at 34 tiles remaining. So I bumped us up to front runner. 34 tiles remaining and we can use jokers. No more keepers yet. We've advanced the game a little bit. We, we did a quint with the four bam. And now we're ready to win on a flower or a joker. Flower or a joker. There are 14 tiles remaining, but the chances of us getting a joker in the end game is pretty slim. So I bumped us back to contender. We would have to really think it through if we pick a, a risky tile, like a red or a red dragon. Let me see. 
there were three red dragons out. Let's see, two, three red dragons are out and one, two, white. If we picked a dragon, I think it would be risky because of that player on the right. So we would have to really watch our discards based on what is happening at this table. But we are ready to win. We just need a flower or a joker. In this case, somebody else won. And we were ready to win on the same tile. They won with a flower. So they were ahead of us. So we just missed the boat on that one. But we were right there, ready to win. Okay, so now let's look at a game coming together in the end game now. In this case, we're again an underdog. We're looking at consecutive run number one, number three. So let's see number one, one through five, and one suit. Number three would be the dragon hand. Number five dash one, one, two, three, four, five. So that would be two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six Kongs with a pair of flowers or maybe even the concealed hand. So we have three or four hands that we could potentially play here. So really one, two, three, four, I could update that hand count to three. Three hands, but we have three weaknesses. None of our tiles are out. We have no gaps for all of these options. We just need to build. I would still say we're an underdog though because we can't keep all these tiles. So we have four clear discards plus some. That's why we're an underdog on this one. So we need to take low risk approach for this game until we're, we have a better position. So later in the game, one of our opponents conged or punged a red dragon with a joker. And we have a red dragon. We've got one, two, four, five potential hands here. So it looks like I updated that the hand count to four, but it really one, two, three, four, five, because we could play uh, four, five, four, five with bams and cracks. So there's actually five hands we could potentially play here. Now with the dragon, we could maybe do a joker exchange. And if this were my hand, I would take it. I would take the joker exchange and take off hand number three and hand number eight and whittle down to three potential hands, especially because we're coming into the middle of the game at six, 76 tiles. So I did that. I took the joker and now we have three hands that we could be playing. One of our tiles is out, uh, five crack. There's a five crack out and we have three potential hands because we now did the joker exchange. So two of the, the two joker hands are out. So now we have the potential to pung, but we don't know what hand we're playing yet. So I would not do that. We're still an underdog. We don't know what hand we're playing, even though we could call the six we wouldn't know what we're going to play, so we're not going to take it. We'll let it go. Now we have another option with a four crack. So we could commit to a hand. We've got hand one where we could pung, five dash one where we could Kong using the joker, and then sit, uh, the six hand down where we could Kong or pung, three, three, four, or four, five, four, five. So we can do three, four, three, four, or four, five, four, five. So let's see which one, which one we did. With that four crack out, some uh, two tiles are out. So you want to think about what is going out that you need. How many discards do you have? How many picks are remaining? Basically, what phase of the game are you in so that you can keep a tab on your position in order to know the kinds of risks that you can take? So I let that first four crack go. Here's another chance for a four crack. And I pro I'm probably going to take it now because our options are dwindling. If we don't start acting and expediting on a hand, we're going to miss out. 
we might even fold at this stage because we're in the middle of the game. In this case, I took it and I basically am committing to either consecutive run number one or four, five, four, five, hand six. So we have five discards. I bumped us back to an underdog, which means we're going to take a low risk approach until we bump back up. A five bam goes down and we can only calm and we're not ready for it. So we have to let that go. And that's going to mean we're going to need another joker. A five bam goes down and we could call it. So I did. It's a bit risky, but we're committing now to one hand that can use any number of jokers. This would be a hand of least resistance. We have two weaknesses now. The four bam needs to be a pung and the five crack needs to be a calm. One tile is out, the five crack. So one of the beauties of this particular hand is that you can use any number of jokers. It's a pung, it's a two pung, two kong hand. So any number of jokers will help us with hand development. We're still an underdog though. We're at 55 tiles remaining. It looks like we're still drawing. We haven't picked a, a tile. Let's see, we picked a joker. So we did get a joker and we could maybe pung the four, bam. So that might be helpful for us. We got another joker and our tile goes down, the five crack. Do we take it? Yes, we do. We are still in the middle game and the risk is worth it because we're one away from ready. We need one good pick and the five crack is still available for Joker exchange. So we could potentially win. And even if we pick well, there are two picks remaining in the, in the end of the middle game. If we can be ready to win by the end of that third wall, we could probably bump ourselves up to contender or maybe even a front runner again. So we have picked an eight crack. And I think there's already an eight crack out. So that shouldn't, there are two. So that should be safe. But, and we, we discarded, we have one discard and somebody else won. We got very close to this particular game. So we, we ended the game as an underdog. And I just wanted to show you this because even though you can determine your position or estimate your position compared to your other opponent by your opponents, and based on the hand development and your tiles needed as that they're visible on the table in discards or exposures, you can figure out your potential to win and what position you're in so that you can make decisions and take calculated risks. If you're an underdog, take a low risk approach. If you're a contender, take moderate risks. And if you're a front runner, don't worry about risk and play to win. Push. Okay, now we're going to talk about end game decisions, unless anybody has any questions about position and the variables that you consider as you're, as you're assessing your position and the kinds of risks that you can take based on your position. Are there any questions that I can answer? If so, put them in caps. I'll give you just a minute to do that and then we'll move on to end game decisions because this is really where the push fold judgment comes in. You've got to decide, are the picks just getting too risky? In which case, based on your hand development and your position, do you fold and discard safely? Or are you further enough in your hand develop far enough in your hand development to play to win. You got to think about the tiles that are visible, discards and exposures, how many discards you have, and then how many picks left in the wall. All that comes into play. Since I don't see any questions, I'm going to go ahead and move forward with end game decisions. When you are ready to win in the end game, you need to assess 
the potential of getting your winning tile. Look for your needed tiles in the discards and exposures, then consider if it's being held by one of your opponents or if it maybe could be in the wall. So that's why it's important to train yourself to look for discards and exposures to figure out what your opponents are playing in order to determine if they've got your tile and if they're going to keep it. If somebody is playing to win in the end game, they may discard a risky tile. And the way you can tell if someone is playing to win is typically if they discard risky tiles or if they make exposures, especially exposures with jokers. Those are the ways that you can tell if someone's playing to win. Very rarely will someone make an exposure if they're not intending to push to win in the end game. Some players will do that even if they folded as misdirection. But it's not a good move, in my opinion, because it gives away information. So look for discards, watch exposures, and especially watch for the discard after someone makes an exposure. That discard at this point in the game is going to give away really good information. Sometimes it's just going to be an unwanted tile, but sometimes it could be a keeper that can help you figure out or confirm what hand you think they're playing. If you think that the potential of getting your winning tile is slim, consider executing a fold plan. If you think your winning tile is in the wall or it may be discarded by an opponent, execute a push plan. For a push plan, you're going to discard the riskiest tile first and accept the consequences. There could be a penalty involved if you discard the winning tile, and you could also get criticism from players if you discard a risky tile. But if you're going to push to win, you've got to discard something risky, potentially. If you also win, then win with humility, basically. Declare Mahjong. You're going to play to win, and sometimes that discard, although risky, ends with you winning the game. So whatever the consequences, win with dignity and humility, either way. If you think the winning tile for if you think you have the winning tile for an opponent, so you picked a risky tile, if you think that that could be a winning tile for your opponent, you have to consider the options, count the cost, make a decision, and then execute a plan. If you decide to fold, you're going to keep the risky tiles, and then you're going to break up your hand and discard as safely as possible in order to, to end the game with a draw, if possible. If you're going to play to win, execute the push plan that we talked about before. So we're going to now look at this risk assessment matrix because this could help you figure out the likelihood of discarding a tile that is risky and it can also show you the impact that you could create by discarding that tile. So on the likelihood side, we have a tile with improbable risk. That would be that the risk is unlikely to occur. So maybe you draw a tile where three are out in discards. That is an improbable, that will have improbable risk. There's also possible risk where there could be risk involved. And that might be where there are, let's say, two tiles out. Somebody could be now ready on that. Maybe they have, maybe they're waiting on, they picked a pair tile or maybe they drew a joker or something like that. So you could only account for two tiles. There will be possible risk with that particular picked tile. 
And then you have the probable risk. And this is where risk will likely occur because maybe there are no tiles visible for that pick. That pick tile has no tiles out. That is going to be a probable risk. Let's now talk about the impact that it could create. The first is an acceptable impact. This would be if you don't know what your opponents are playing. Maybe nobody has any exposures. It's rare, but it does happen where nobody has exposures. Or maybe you could tell by disc or discards and exposures that people are playing a low point hand, 25 point hand. That may create an acceptable risk for you. If you draw, let's say, a possibly risky tile, if there are no exposures, you might go ahead and discard that because nobody has exposures. If you're unsure what they're playing, so you're going to take that risk. It's acceptable to you. Then we have a tolerable risk. This would be where you see someone with one exposure. Now, with one exposure, you're not going to be able to tell what hand they're playing typically unless you've been able to remember the tiles that they've discarded because that would be the way to narrow down what hands they could be playing in order to figure out the point value for the hand that they're playing. It, not a lot of people can do that. But if you, if you have a feeling that someone's playing a higher point hand, the impact could move up to a tolerable still a tolerable level. There's still going to be an impact, but it's it's tolerable. Then you have an unacceptable level of impact where someone has two exposures and you can, by process of elimination, figure out what hand they're playing to determine the likelihood of you discarding a risky tile. And also, if somebody has a quint exposed and you have a, a tile that could possibly give them a winning tile on a quint, that would be an unacceptable impact. And then we have the intolerable impact. This would be where someone has three exposures, where you know what hand they're playing for sure. With two exposures, sometimes there could be a couple of hands, but with three, they're playing one hand, and you should know what tile they need in order to win. If they're playing a quint, that's going to be an intolerable impact if you throw a risky tile. And if they're if they're fully concealed and you know they're playing a pair hand because maybe they discarded a joker, and, and based on the discards that are out, maybe there are no white dragons and few twos, you might think they're playing the big year hand and you're going to discard a two or a white dragon that would be a probable risky tile. So considering the likelihood, improbable, possible, and probable, and then impact being acceptable, tolerable, unacceptable, and intolerable, we're going to look at risk. Under acceptable, we have low and medium. If it's an improbable risky tile, it's going to have low risk. Same with possible. Under the acceptable conditions, though, no exposures. And then if it's a probable winning tile, it's going to have a medium risk. And that would be if maybe there are no exposure or no uh, none of those tiles out. Then we're going to increase risk under tolerable. It goes to medium and high. So if, if someone has an exposure and you draw a possible tile that they can use, that's going to have medium risk. If you have a tile that you've drawn that ha is probably a tile they need based on their exposure and the tiles they've recently discarded, that's going to be a high risk. And then we increase even more under the unacceptable column. Probable risky tile is going to have a high risk and an unacceptable impact. So this is where you're probably going to start folding. In, in this high risk area, you want to consider folding. And then we move into the intolerable impact where you have high and extreme risk. You fold. Fold, live to fight another day. So 
excuse me, I hope you find this helpful. Keep this visual in mind when you're playing the game. And this comes up in the end of the middle game and the, and the end game, the fourth wall. If you want to, you can download this. I have created a template where you can print this double-sided and have it with you. It will fit in your card so that you can have it handy when you play with friends or play in a casual game. I would not take this to a tournament or anything like that. Or if you play with competitive players, you might not want to have it on the table. This is really for practice and until you have this in your mind. Low, medium, high risk, extreme risk, fold, low risk, push. That kind of an idea is the whole purpose of this particular visual. And on the back is a summary of the fold and push plans for fold and push judgment. Now, I want to share this quote with you. The smarter you play, the luckier you will be. The luck comes in with your deal. The skill comes in with hand development and tactics. There's a little luck in the wall. You got to be able to draw your tiles. But that's where you'll be luckier because you're going to set yourself up with, with for success with practice, skill building, and correct application of tactics. I hope that you found this helpful. Please let me know in chat or in the comment section below the video what you think about it. This, again, is a sneak peek into my next book that I hope to publish this month. We're going to play Mahjong now, and hopefully we'll be able to demonstrate all of these ideas. Let me open Mahjong time, and we'll start playing. And this is the layout that everyone voted on. We're going to stay up at the top right. Uh, we missed that table. So we're going to look for another opportunity here to join. We're going to create our own opportunity here. Okay. What do you guys think? Tell me while we're waiting for people to join our table, here's one we can jump to. What did you guys think about calculating risks? I hope you found it helpful. We just need one more player and we can start gameplay with commentary on all of those concepts. You're welcome, Sandra, thank you. Okay, so here we go. We have a pair of flowers, pair three BAM, five BAM, nine. In cracks, we have one, eight, nine. We have a green dragon, a red dragon, and an east and a west. So I would start with the flowers and the three BAM, two multiples. So we could maybe play a one, three, five hand. We might be able to use the other dragon if we play like numbers. And... Let's see here. We have th two nines with flowers. I don't think that's going to help us. Not with a three bam. I would let the nines go. So nine bam, eight with an east is what I would let go of here. Excellent, JL. Thank you. Okay, so we picked up a five bam, another pair. So we have two pair now in our hand. We have West, let's pass the seven and the nine. It's a little bit risky there, but I think also passing, let's see here, the red dragon would be just as risky. Okay, we got we got maybe some keepers in here. We got one and three. So we're going to keep all those. We picked up a pair of red dragons. So what I would probably do here, let's see here. We have a pair of flowers. 
we have an extra three. We have three five in BAMs. Green, I, I would probably let that green dragon go. We could maybe try for one three five dragon, but we have no one dot. I think what I would do here is probably let the one crack go. Let's see, if we get a five dot or a, a three crack, we might be able to switch to like numbers. So probably what I would do here, oh, we definitely want to keep going. This is a bit of a challenge here because we've got a gap. We have, we need, um, let's see here. I think what I would do is break up the red dragon and maybe see about playing three, four, five with flowers. We have a gap, no four. Or maybe one, three, three, five. If we get a one dot, we have a gap, no one. Or like numbers with threes or fives, depending on what comes in. And that would be a gap. We're playing a gap hand here. So right now, we're an underdog for sure. So we need to take low risk, very low risk right now. Okay, so we have tiles we can pass. And that's not too risky right there. Okay, we picked up our four. So now we have a hand with no gaps. Three, four, five, one suit, Kong. Three, four, five, one suit, Kong. We have one of each of the dragons. So I probably would, I don't know if I would pass a five. I think I would let a dragon go. And maybe we can keep the white or the red or green dragon here because if we get a two or a six, maybe we could play the concealed hand. So one pass, one or two passes gave us some hope with this hand. We have three tiles to pass. Let's see, our opponent wants three. Uh, we can do three. Instead of passing a five, seven, let's see here. It might be better to let the white dragon go. I don't usually pass white dragons, but I think a seven, five in one suit is risky too. It's kind of six, one half dozen the other. Okay, no keepers. We have four discards and a couple Two of hands. Characters. So we have some options. I would say we're probably an underdog with this number of discards. I would let the seven bam go. With a five seven bam Kong moves. now, Six I would focus on moves. three, four, five, one suit Kongs. Six, we have four discards. So I would say with that keeper, that five bam, we're a contender four now. Bamboos. So I would bump us up. But now our four bam just went down. So we are going to need a joker. Two dots. We're going to need a joker for that four bam. Four bamboos. Now we'll need two. West wind. We'll need two jokers. At the moment, what I'm Seven thinking characters. is I'm I'm kind of hoping for a one bam now. One dot. One bam would help us move to odds. One dot. Fourth hand down. One three five dragon. Seven characters. If we can get a one bam, that would be ideal. Two bamboos. Because then we don't have to worry about the four bam. So Six in dots. this case, we could even define this as a one bam. Four bamboos. There goes the other four bam. Two so I, I would definitely focus on one, three, five dragon. One bamboo. Leverage the five bam. Four bamboos. So there's another dragon or another four joker dice. for us. So I would say we're still a Seven contender bamboos. because we, we need a pair of green dragons. And three there are no dragons bamboos. out yet. So... An opponent may be holding dragons. North wind. So the absence of tiles would be a red flag. 
That would be something that you want to look for, especially if you need those tiles. We need that. We need a green dragon. Nine Somebody could nine. be holding the, the dragons. And it could be more than one player. Two dots. So what we're looking for is a one BAM. We have our pair of three BAMs. We have our Kong. We have our pair of flowers. So all we need is the one BAM or jokers three dots. and this green dragon, of course. Two discards. Five dots. If we can get either East Wind, a Joker, one BAM, or the Dragon, I would bump us up to front runner. But I'd say we're a contender. Three dots. So we can take moderate Six risks. Bamboos. And that applies to our discards. Five dots. Okay, now we have the three BAM. Four characters. Four BAM we let go of because there are four dots. out. I would stick with this. This More three BAM win. is probably a discard unless we keep drawing jokers. And if we do keep drawing jokers, Red we could define Red them Red. all as four BAMs. You can use any number of jokers with Please a block win. of three or more identical Two tiles. Characters. So we'll just see how this goes. Calm. We got skipped. East wind. Six bamboos. Red dragon. Okay, let's see. These are these out. Let's see. Four crack. Four crack. One they're one of each is out. Four characters. Nine bamboos. Seven dots. White dragon. We need a keeper. This two Seven crack dots. is locked in. That joker there is locked in. East wind. Three characters. Okay, we're we're okay at the moment. Seven dots. We've got a flower now. Okay, let's let the five go. All right, so I don't think there's a lot we can do here. Six bamboos. I think that three bam is a discard. We're in the middle game. We probably should discard the flower first. We don't want to hold on to that in the end game, and I don't think we can use it. Let's throw the flower. Flower. It's the first one out. Um, nobody wanted it. Somebody is Seven playing wind. a wind hand, I think. Wait, I see. West no, wind. all the east are out. There's a west. So that should be safe. Green dragon. We're looking for, oh darn, there's our tile. We're not ready for it. Three bamboos. At 40 tiles remaining, Eight and we dots. need we need at least one more joker and that green dragon we might consider folding nine bamboo let's just we're gonna play to win at the moment but let's just see i'd say we're still a contender six dots we got another three bam six characters north wind we already let the three bam go and all the fours are out Red dragon. Only one one bam is out, and we really need that green dragon. Until we get that green dragon or another one bam, I would Red just dragon. stick with the plan. There's a one bam. Okay, green now bamboos. now we're we're set. We can Kong the one Seven bam. Dots. There are still two more left. Discard one the West dragon. and be ready to win. So I would bump us up to front runner. White dragon. West wind. There are three three dots out. Six characters. Somebody could still be holding dragons. With a Kong of two, two cracks, dots. it's not going to be the player on the right. Green dragon. That's the second one. 
south wind. There's only one more green dragon. One dot. Four dots. We need that, that dragon or the one bam. Green dragon. There it is. So we fold. Oh, that is such a drag. We just got ready to win. Uh, oh, that's painful. Shoot. All right. Well, we came a long, long way on this one. Two bamboos. I mean, we could still win if we draw two jokers, but I doubt that's going to happen. Characters. We might as well throw that. West wind. Nobody wants the one bams. Nobody wants the green dragon. We would need to dedicate both I jokers to the threes, and then we would need four more jokers, which is not going to happen. So we fold, basically. There's no way we can Two win. Two bamboos. That Green was painful. Jacket. Drawing that tile after our tile just went down, that was salt Eight in the wound. Bamboos. Salt in the wound. Mahjong. Oh, shucks. All right, so we have a like number hand over there. Like numbers with eights. Okay, and then we have uh, 369 on the right. Looks like like numbers with nines probably. And then we have one, two, three Kongs on the left. Okay, so I hope you got a feel for what it's like to adjust your position in the game based on your hand development, your number of discards, and then the picks remaining in the wall, also while considering your tiles being out. Those are all the things that you need to consider when calculating risk. Here we go, next game. We have a pair of green dragons and a pair of three bams. What in the heck? Okay, let's see if we can... Look, it's almost like we're playing the same hand. How did that happen? All right, let's maybe keep... Well, no, we're not going to keep wins. We're not going to keep wins. No. Maybe like numbers with threes. This almost looks like the same hand. But we were playing a gap hand for quite a while, which makes it difficult. Okay, so we have a one four, one three four. Here's a north south now. North and south with a six. We definitely don't need the six. With a three bam and a green dragon, we really don't need the one. Let's see, we could try for north and news with. Let's see, let's try for like numbers with threes or news concealed. All right, so we picked up a west. Let's let the dragon go. Because we could play three, four with news. News concealed. Hopefully the winds will keep coming around and we'll gather. We have a gap, no east, but that's a single tile. We have an option here with our four crack now because we we need an offsuit pung with our three. We should definitely keep going. Let's see here with the west. We could switch to all winds. We have a gap, no east. Three, bam, pair. Let's let the west go. We could always change our mind. Got the four dot. All right, now we can let the four crack go. And then we'll pass four, six, north. Okay, this is looking pretty good, even though we have a gap, no east. Hopefully we'll pick it up or be ready to win on it. It's a little bit risky to be waiting on a single tile, but hopefully we'll get it. There it is. 
Okay, and we're passing right, so we can pass blind. Let's see here. I would not pass a flower. We're playing a concealed hand, so we can't call. We have to draw our tiles from the wall, and passing a, a flower is very risky. So I would say that we're a front runner on this one with three discards, but I would not pass a flower because we have to pick our tiles from the wall. So I would pass only two. Our hand is going to, our hand development is going to move to a crawl now. This is why the Charleston is so powerful because you're going to, you get basically three picks in one pass. And we're going to now go to one pick at a time. Nine dots. That's why if you harness the power of the Charleston, that's half that's the game. Win. You can set yourself up for success. So I hope you appreciate the Charleston. I, it's one of the big epiphanies that I've had playing this game. One dot. The Charleston and why it's part of the game. Six characters. Okay, so we cannot call. We're playing a concealed Six hand. Characters. We have three discards and a hand with no gaps. Two dots. There's a keeper. Flower. We have two discards. So we are a front runner, but we are playing a concealed hand. We can use any number of jokers at One this point because we have our singles. Green dragon. So we just need to keep an eye out for the discards. It Six looks dots. like somebody else could be in, in wins because there's only one wind out. So we may have a competitor One for wins. White dragon. Two dots. Eight bamboos. All right, so let's see. One, north two, wind. three, four, four picks. We've gone through four. There's a, a north. Thankfully, nobody wanted north it, north so north maybe north. we're going to be okay as far as other somebody else playing wins. We need north Seven and south. Bamboos. North and south, pungs. Two bamboos. Somebody kept the two bam in the Charleston. Two dots. Eight characters. All right. We went north, south, three, East four. East wind. We'll pass, of course. One character. Maybe we'll maybe we'll see fours in, in exposures right three now. characters. Okay, no hesitation there. Seven bamboos. We have fours and none are Seven out characters. at the moment. Let's let the four crack go. Four characters. Not much, not a hesitation there. Let's keep the five Eight and let characters. the four bam go. One dot. I'm kind of glad there was no hesitation on the four because that would be a like number for our keeper. Nine bamboos. Let's see. Let's let the one go first. One dot. We want to figure out if anyone's holding our keepers Seven here. Bamboos. It looks like I see a lot of two, four, six, eight out here. Eight There's dots. a four. We've got twos, sixes, and Two eights dots. out. So it appears that no one's four playing characters. an even hand. There's one three out. One dot. I only see one three. So... I do see Flower. I do see ones though. So I don't it doesn't seem like anyone's playing little odds. Four dots. And that would be okay, there's our tile. We're not, of course, not ready for it there. One bamboo. Okay, still no hesitation there. Three dots. No hesitation there. Five. So it appears that we're gonna be okay with our pawns. It's just going to be a matter of Three drawing, characters. and thankfully, we can use jokers Four if bamboos. we have to. This will be an option for us. We have an east and a Three west dots. out. Those are singles. A north is out. That We need that tile for a pung. We have an extra east. Flower. Okay, now there's a hesitation. 
Thankfully, we don't Three need flowers. Characters. Okay, seven crack. We can let that go. Seven characters. There's a hesitation on the seven. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. A seven crack was Six just thrown bells. a bit ago. They have a pung of sevens. They have a five crack in front of them. Nine bamboo. So my my guess is they're playing five probably bells. with an eight crack there, big odds. They're probably playing five Six seven bells. in in bams. Let's see, uh, our dots. Two characters. There are three seven bams out. Okay, here's east and west. Let's stick with this. East wind. Right now we're one away. Let's see here, right there. Three. Okay, characters. so west is extra. So three I'm dots. thinking they're playing five, seven, nine with cracks and dots. One bamboo. Five, seven in dots. Three based dots. on what is out. And that doesn't three affect characters. us at all. Uh, to the left. Two there are a lot of nines. One, two. Five bamboos. Okay, five. Oh, right. Here we go. We're ready West to win. Wind. And we're ready on a one, two, three quad weight. Seven. Characters. We're ready to win on three, four, three bam, four dot north four or bamboos. south. Any one of those and we'll win. That is a, called a quad weight. Green dragon. And we're, we will, we are likely going to win this. South wind. There it is. Mahjong. Woohoo! Mazel. Okay, we got a winner. Front runner confirmed. And here we have two, four, six, eight dragon. Ooh, ready? No, no, no. Yes, ready to win on a flower. Oh man, five, seven, nine, five, seven, seven, nine with dots over here. Like numbers with fives. Okay, here we go. We'll play again. And it looks like we got in. Thank you for the kudos. That was a good that was a good example of let's see. I think we were a contender and we bumped up to front runner. We were a contender because we were playing a concealed hand. So if you're playing a concealed hand, you got to adjust your position because if you don't draw your tiles, you you're, you're going to be trailing behind. Here we go, next game. We have a lot of cracks, a pung of fours. So we have a pung of fours and another four. So I would definitely keep the fours. Here's a four, five, and a three. Here's a five, six. That's where I would stop, I think. The one can go, the eight can go. Sometimes wins come around, but I don't know if I would play a concealed hand. We do have a hand in here with no gaps. Three, four, crack, five, six. Three, four, five, six. Let's let the wind go. So some form of a consecutive hand. Three, four, five, six. There's a four dot. We could do four, five, four, five. That's another Pung Kong hand. I would not pass two wins, so we have to let something go. We have three, four, five, six, or we have three, well, three, four, five, six would be the hand with no gaps. So let's let, let's see, three, four, four, five, Let's let the four dot go. If we get a six bam, we would have options. Or if we get a five crack. Okay, no keepers, really. The red dragon, we might be able to use it, but it's not looking promising. We can keep it for a minute. Okay, west one seven. How about that?
no keepers. All right, one, let's see, yeah, we definitely want to keep going. Here's where I would maybe consider hoarding wins because our hand really didn't come in. I would probably not keep that dragon. We're going to keep going and we're going to see if wins come through. We still have a hand in here with no gaps. Three, four, five, six, Pong Kong, Pong Kong, second hand down on the right. But if wins come around, we could maybe switch to that news concealed hand again with a four five, four crack five dot. We have a three, three, four, three, four. Now we have here three, four, three, four. I'd give up here on this wind. I would let it go. We have no other wins. So we have three, four, five, six, or three, four, three, four. Two hands of least resistance. No keepers. We need keepers in here. Three, four, three, four, or three, four, five, six. We got a keeper, a six dot. So I would let go of the three, four option. Three, four, three, four. There's our six. We do have four, five there. Three, four, five, five, six. Three, four, five, nine. That collection really, really came through. Three, four, five, five, six. Three, four, five, six. So I would, I would let the five go and pass fully. So let's pass nine, five with a three, nine, five, three. Three, four, five, six, Pong Kong, Pong Kong. Wow, that's, that's interesting. Okay, so here's a four or five Life now. Man. We might as well tuck these in. Let's throw the ones. One dot. So we have three, four, five, six, likely. One character. Second hand down on the right. One bamboo. That would be a pass. So they had a pair of ones and a no one. win. Oh, ones. Yikes. One bamboo. Seven dots, five characters. All right. Well, they didn't want our, One our pass. That's good. West we, can, we can Kong the four crack and three the six bamboos. dot, or we could maybe Pung the Nine three or bamboos. five. So we've got a lot of work to do here. We need to draw Nine well. Dots. We're, a, we're a, what do you call, we're a um, underdog on this one. One dot. We have four, five, four, five now. Three, four. four. I almost wish we could draw five crack, but one is out. So no, I would, I would discard four, five. Flower. We're going to need, let me see. We're okay. This four dot, we, we may one be able red. to get a joker there. We'll see. Okay. Nine dot. We don't need, we're playing nine three, four, dot. five, six. The four dot we're going to hold on to till 60 Three tiles characters. remaining. That we could pung, but let's wait and, and just hold off for a little bit. If we get a flower, we could maybe switch to like numbers with One fours. Bamboo. So maybe we should hold the fours. One character. There's a flower now. Five bamboos. I almost think we should switch to like numbers with fours. Four bamboos. We're not ready to call that though. And that's the second one. I think we're I think we're probably better off where we were. Three bamboos. Let's see, green dragon. 
That's Two a keeper for moves. potential like numbers. And we can use the Seven Joker. Characters. So maybe like numbers Three would bamboos. be good. Let's just wait and see. Three characters. We have to make a choice right now. Let's pong. Pong. We're going to play three, four, five, Flower. six. And that will allow us to expedite hand development. So I would say that we are a contender Five because we have two discards with Joker bait. We're at 68 Five tiles. Dots. So let's see if we can get Nine the four dot to 60, which we will, because we have two discards. So if we can get three bamboo, two good picks, we'll be ready or we'll be three we'll characters. be set. Okay, so someone got our Joker. Seven. That's bamboos. okay. One dot. We're at sixty-two tiles, so we're gonna let the four dot go. East wind. Right in our next pick. Nobody wants the four bam. Green dragon. Okay, there's a hesitation on the green dragon. We should escalate that. East wind. Green dragon. Somebody wanted it, but there's there's this hesitation. I don't want to wait because now we're we're on the other side of the middle of the game. We're still in the middle game, the middle wall, but 60 tiles is right in the middle. So we don't want to hold on to risky tiles like dragons. Two dots. Okay, so the one crack, three are out. Four bam, two are out. Four dot, none are out. So we're going to let this Seven go next. Dots. Eight bam, none are out. Let's start there. Eight bamboos. Someone may be playing evens. There's a two Five dot characters. out here. White dragon. Okay, so next we're still in the middle game, so we're all right with our Seven Joker bait. Uh, there's a keeper. Four dots. Nobody wanted the four dot. All right, so now Seven we're characters. ready to Pung and Kong. We need one good pick. Pung. I would say we're still a contender. Two characters. Until we get one more good keeper here. Four dots. Let's see. Five bam one is out. Four bam two are out. We Power. have good discards here. We can call for two of our three Seven blocks. Bamboos. We're in the we're still in the middle game. Somebody just won. Six, seven, eight, nine, handle least resistance. With the help of jokers. Well done. Here. We have news concealed, two, three. Here, this is our even hand, two, eight, dragon. All right, let's play again. We don't want to play in a marathon right now. All right, let's see here. I need to make sure that there's a link to that risk matrix. Yep, it's down there. The risk matrix is down there. So if you want to download that, just print it double-sided on the long edge. And it'll be double-sided. And that way you can memorize it. Just remember the likelihood, the three likelihoods, and the four impacts. And then remember low, medium, high, extreme. I think it's an easy visual matrix that can help you, especially in the end game when you start drawing risky tiles. All right, here we go. Next game. Oh, you know, let me. Ouch. Ah. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Uh. 
I hit my Achilles. Oh. <laughs> oh. I hit my heel on my chair. That hurts. Why does it hurt so bad back there? Oh my gosh. Ow. <laughs> okay, we have one, two. We have a pair of eights, though. Oh my gosh. Ouch. Let's see here. One, two, pung. We have an east paired up. Darn it. Okay, let's see. Five dot. That's not helpful. Wow. Oh, this is a rough start here. Okay, let's do eight with a nine. All right. One bam pung with a two. Pair east. I'm kind of thinking the pair of east is going to have to go. Somebody gave us like numbers. Oh, two, four, eight. Let's let the dragon go, I guess. Let's see, east and west with dragons. We have no other dragons. One, two, four. Let's break up the eight. East and west with one, two, three. We have a gap, no three. There's a north and a two. Okay, well, this turned out nice. How about one, two, news concealed? That's funny how that hand keeps showing up. All right, let's pass four bam with the eight, six. That's a little bit risky. We could probably let the east go, but we also have potential for the fifth hand down under wins. Fifth hand down under wins. We've got a west, east and west. Okay, east and west, one, two. We definitely should keep going. We have east and west paired up. I'm thinking we should maybe switch to the first hand or play east and west with a run if we can get a three bam. If we keep getting wins, I would let the one, two go. There's a wind. All right. So four, eight with a one. We could still do east and west with a run, but most likely I would switch to the first hand. Or we could play the fifth hand down still. Actually, that looks really good if we can get more flowers. I think that's what I would do if this were my hand. All right, no keepers. Four, green. This is going to the right. So let's let, let the two dot go. <clears throat> Hopefully we'll get to play two more games. Ah, I was hoping for another wind. That's okay. We need flowers is what we really need in here. Let's see here. We, let's see how many can we do here. We could, oh, they only want two. We could do two. Let's do the eight bam with a, a red dragon. Okay, so in this case, we have three discards and joker bait. We got the, oh my goodness. We have two. Oh, yeah, this is yikes. Okay, let's let the, uh, let's see, one, two, let's let a one bam go. One bamboo. Yeah, no hesitation there. So one I think bamboo. we can let those go. And then we'll keep the eight crack as a, as a joker bait. So we have eight three bamboos. discards with joker bait and a Seven hand bamboo. with no gaps. And that we need to Kong. We're going to pass. We could pung it. 
but now Eight look what characters. we have. Look what we have here. One, two, three. We could play east and west with one, two, three. three dots. East and west with a run. We have four Nine tiles dragons. with the run there. We have four tiles for the fifth hand down. We have one discard before we have to make a choice. Two dots. So, and there's the two. I would Eight I would play characters. east and west with a run. We could pung both east and west. We just need help with our our three bam. Seven characters. Let's see here. But we could pung oh the the flowers. The fifth hand down under wins. The kicker there is we need four flowers and we have only one. That's a big weakness. Two bamboos. Either way, we have a weakness because we also have a three bam that needs to be a, a Kong. But a three bam Eight Kong characters. with jokers is better than a flower Kong with jokers because Seven of the number characters. of flowers in the game. Eight as opposed to three or i'm sorry four with a four three bam bamboos. so i'm kind of thinking we should play east and west with a run we've got the pairs we just need help with the three bam one weakness versus two weaknesses with news Five with bamboos. flowers because we need a joker for the south and it's a Seven pair bamboos. and we need to make it a kong so we have two kongs that we need with a single and a pair needing a joker. So there are just too many weaknesses with news flower hand. So let's play east and west with a run. We can pung east Three and west. Dots. Now the challenge is somebody else is probably playing wins. Otherwise we would be seeing flower Four or dots. the winds go down now. There's a south out, but no east west. Green dragon. We'll just see. Maybe somebody's playing concealed. Six characters. Somebody could be doing the concealed news hand or maybe the Five year characters. hand. Year hand concealed. Four dots. North wind. All right, let's let north and south go. North wind. Flower. Okay, there's a hesitation on the flower. That's really not smart to hold on to. We're gonna let the Seven flower go. Moves. We're not gonna need it. We're we're we have enough Ten. of a hand, I think, Six to bamboos. dig in with it. Dig it. We can dig it. Seven dots. Three bamboos. Oh, that's our tile. Two dots. All right. Well, now I'm thinking, well, no, I was thinking let's switch to Four dots. one, two, three Kongs, but the one bams are already wow. down. Not only are the one bams down, but a three bam is down, a two bam is down. So wow. even though that looks pretty, it's really not helpful. We're going to stick with it. Let's keep the flower though. Two bamboo. Because oh, let's see. We gave up a we gave up a north. There are two norths out. Hmm. All right. Well, we're Since gonna we're gonna keep our eye on the three bam. I'd say I would say we're probably a contender, even with our weakness hmm. with the three bam. There are two jokers up for grabs One right now. Dragon. Five dots. Okay, there's a hesitation on that five. I think we should stick with three, uh, the run, and we should let this flower go. Green dragon. East and west with a run. We need to stick with it. One dot. Five characters. Oh my gosh, we got a flower. Eight dots. Oh geez. Okay, Six so we're characters. straddling. We could still be ready on a north. Seven characters. If we get a south, I would switch to the fifth Five hand down, bamboos. I think. I think we're kind of just in between Five here. Characters. 
We have one more tile towards east and west with a run. Seven bamboos. Oh, they got two jokers. Three characters. Two jokers in exchange. Darn. All right. Let's just wait and see. One character. We're at 53 tiles. We don't want to hold on to these flowers for too long. Two dots. Nine dots. One, two, three. Hmm. Three characters. Oh, boy. Still no sign of east Joker. and west. And somebody threw a joker. That's a red flag. Red flag on the play. Nine characters. Three crack. We don't need that. Three characters. I think we should dig in with east and west with a run. Even, even though we need a joker here joker oh my gosh that's painful eight bamboos there's a north oh my gosh all right forget it Three let's bamboos. stick with news now that we have the north only Six one bamboos. joker needed there let's see i, I moved the wrong tile okay let's pung pung all right, now there are two two bams out and two one bams are two out. Bamboos. These should be safe. Somebody else, I think, might be playing North winds. Wind. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe they're in the South wall. Wind. Let's see. Oh, shoot. Now we need two jokers. Oh. Nine I'd say we're, we're probably bumping two back bamboos. to underdog at this point. Because now we're in the end game and we need two jokers. Three and somebody bamboos. discarded jokers. They're probably playing Three a bamboos. pair hand over there. Or or I suppose they could be waiting on a pair. There are three sixes out. Four bamboos. These ones should be safe. We got the flower. One well, that bamboos. worked out nice. Now we just need two jokers. East wind. We're good there. So we let her north go, but we Four picked it up characters. and switched back. That's how forgiving this game is. It's very forgiving. West wind. One bamboo. Okay, the seven dot, I should have thrown that instead. Because that that is a that has a little more risk. Only Joker. one is out. And that player over there keeps throwing jokers. Holy cow. Three dots. They must be playing a pair hand. We got the other flower. Seven dots. All right. It's a pretty set. Mahjong. Oh, shoot. They are playing a pair hand. Oh, my goodness. Okay. One, three, five, seven, nine. I threw the tile. Seven dot. They only had one exposure, though, so that was it was too hard to tell so that would have been a, t a acceptable risk so here's this pair hand they were going for odds odd pair hand and then here two four six eight so if you throw the winning tile and it's a acceptable or tolerable impact don't Punish yourself. Just accept it and move on to the next game. It happens. Okay, we're trying to get to a table. All right, here we go. This will be the last game for this live stream. Okay, let's jump. We made it. All right. We have a pair of sixes right here. Six crack pair. We have wins. Three, which is significant. Here's like numbers with sixes or five, six, seven. There's a dragon, which is not helpful without flowers. 
we do have some 369 in here, actually. 369 there. We have 567 or 369. Let's let the 3 BAM go. So 567 or 369 or news concealed. We have an 8 and a 5. 5, 6, 7, 8. That would be a hand with no gaps. Let's pass the 2 BAM with the 3 crack. So we have five, six, seven, eight, no gaps. We have wins. We'll break these out. Or maybe we could play north and south with a run. We have a pair of sixes in there. Maybe we keep the five and play news concealed with five, six. We have another another keeper though here five so five six let's pass seven four let's see here with a west so we could do north and south with a run or we can do five six seven eight pong kong pong kong We got a keeper, so we'll break out the, the wins now. We have a hand with no gaps and three mul multiples, which is a strong start, I think. Okay, so we're going to keep going, and we'll break out these uh, the wins. So let's pass a nine dot with a four dot. Five, six, seven, eight, pong, kong, pong, kong, second hand down on the left. We got a keeper looking good. Okay, so let's pass south with a five and a dragon. No, let's see. Let's do green dragon with a five dot. And that way we have a five bam with a six. So we could pung the five, crack, pung the seven. We need a six, eight, and cracks. No keepers. We're going to the right. Going to the right. Our opponent across from us is passing two. That is a red flag. We, we may not pass. Let's see how many they want. Oh, there's five, six, seven, eight there. Let's see how many tiles they want. If they want to, we might reciprocate, maybe. We have four discards and an option, but we have no flowers. Because we could play the concealed consecutive hand. Our opponent is delaying. They don't want any. Okay, that's fine. We're we're doing fine. I think that I would say we're a contender. No, I think at the moment we're an underdog. Are we we're north? So we don't have an extra tile here. South wind. So I'd say with five discards, we're an underdog, even though we have a hand with no gaps. But we can bump ourselves up if we Nine get characters. good picks in the first four picks from the wall. Nine dots. That's not a keeper. One character. Okay, so we have four Six clear dots. discards. If we draw a flower, Five we dots. could maybe play the concealed hand. With four discards, I would say we would Seven be a contender. Vendors. But that's going to be dependent on if we draw a keeper. There's a four. Four five bam dots. pair. We could switch to four, five, six, seven. Five characters. But I probably wouldn't do that. I would I would expedite and pung. Pung. 
and then I would discard this dragon. Red dragon. With a pung of fives, we don't need a dragon. That's not very telling. Eight characters. All right, now, oh, darn it. That would be, we're going to need a joker. Okay, so don't lose heart. Oh, we're going to be okay. We can use jokers. That's one of the beauties of this hand. Seven bamboos. So we're playing five, six, seven. <laughs> we're playing five, six, seven, eight. No gaps. Hong Kong, Hong Kong. We have Joker bait and two discards. No I would course. say that we are probably a front runner. We're still in one, two, three. Nine this bamboos. is the four, um, fourth pick. So we're still in that begin game. One bamboo. I would say we're probably a front runner. Oh, now we have two pairs Five of fours. Bamboos. Maybe we'll get jokers out of these. Four characters. Okay. No hesitation on the four. So Nine maybe dots. not. We'll see. If you're if a like number goes down for your joker Five bait, bamboos. that kind of loses a little bit of power. Six bamboo. We can still pung the seven crack. We're going to need a More joker dark. for the eight. So we, we still need to draw well. I'd say mm, three characters. I would say maybe we're, we should play conservatively until we get another keeper. Six dots. That's, that's not it. Flower. Okay. Flower hesitation there. Four dots. Okay. Nobody wants it. So the four dot can One go character. and the four bam, nobody wanted the four crack. So I Two would characters. say it is likely that these will have no power. Four dots. But we'll see. Three dots. Three characters. East wind. A flower. Flower. All right, we're we're still two picks from the very middle of the game. We have two two clear discards with Joker bait. Two four Eight bams. Dots. It looks like nobody's playing evens. Six bamboos. Uh, and now we have two twos. Dots. Wow. <laughs> Okay, I think One a two, dot. did a two dot go down? Maybe someone's playing four two, four, characters. six, eight with dots and bams. Wouldn't that be nice? East wind. Okay, let's just see. We're at 59 Nine tiles. Bamboos. So let's discard the two dot next. Since that's eight a dots. year tile, no white dragons are out yet. Eight dots. So let's throw the two dot and see what happens. Three dots. Two dots. There's a hesitation. Nobody wanted it. Green dragon. One bam, one is out. Nobody wanted the two. So the four bam will let go of next. White dragon. There goes the white dragon. Three bamboos. All right, we still are looking for a oh. joker. Oh, we got skipped. Green dragon. All right, so with a three bam pung and a green dragon discard, Five they dots. they could be doing little odds. They could be doing Four characters. one, two, three, three. They could be doing a three, six, nine. There are a lot of threes, though, here. There's two My threes and a, and a six. They're playing odds, one, three, five, seven, nine. All right, let's see. It's five till. Here's news concealed. Over here, looks like like numbers with twos. Over here, we're doing odds. Over here, our tiles were in the wall. Let's try one more game. One more game. Sound good? Are you up for it? Oh, shoot. What happened? We got we got booted. How long do we have to wait? Do you think? Hmm. I don't know. All 
I know what I could do. I am going, oh, here we go. Why does that happen? Uh, what? What in the world is going on here? Are you kidding me? It didn't show that I was in a game. What in the world? We missed a pass. And I would have kept that too. All right. What happened there? It better not take my tiles. It totally booted us from the game. Did you see that nonsense? It better not take tiles. I'm going to be upset. If, if it takes our tiles, I'm going to be upset. Do not take my tiles. Let's hope we're okay. I would play three, four, five, six. Pong, Kong, Pong, Kong, one suit, second hand down. There's two multiples in there. We could also maybe do three, four, five, or four, five, six Kongs. People are passing blind. And we just got wins. Three, four, five, six. Let's risk it. Seem nobody wanted the West and Dragon. What happened here with this? Here we, they stopped the Charleston. I seem to remember them doing that before. All right. I'm not going to go on tilt. They want two. We'll do two. Let's give them north and we could play north, east, west with a run. Four, five, six with east and west. And there's... West wind. Let's see here. Let's pass. The east west is weak. I'd rather play three, four, five, six. North wind. I'd rather play three, four, five, six, pong, kong, pong, kong. Three dots. Let's pass for now. Because we could maybe South play wind. four, five, six kongs with a pair of flowers. If another three dot Eight goes down, characters. we can call and play pong, kong, pong, kong. The thing is, is the four dot six characters is is weak. North wind. We need to con the four dot. Four dot. There it is. Either way, we need to con that. So let's con. Con. We'll let the winds go. West wind. So three, four, five, six. Pong, kong, pong, kong. Six That's probably what I would play. In the end, we might need a joker Four for the bamboos. three dot. We'll see. Kong. We could pung the five and Kong the One six. Dragon. Okay, so there are two jokers up for grabs. Seven characters. Let's hope we get one of those. Six characters. A seven. East wind. We don't need a seven. We're committed Seven with our bamboos. four dot. Six dots. Let's Kong. Kong. Let's let's throw the nine. Nine bamboos. All right. Now with two exposures, they're going to be able bamboos. to figure out what we're doing. We're actually close to four, five, six Kongs. Let's just wait and see if we get a five. Red but red we could red. do three, four. Three, four, five, six. South wind. Our weakness right now is the flower and the five. White dragon. With three, four, five, six, pong, kong, pong, kong, we only have one weakness, the three dot. Five characters. And we can use jokers. The flower pair, East wind. you can't use a joker for that. Four characters. Four characters. I'm thinking three, four, five, six. Unless, unless a three dot goes down and we can't call it. 
then Green maybe wagon. I would switch. Let's just see what we draw. Six bamboos. Two characters. We're at 70 tiles. I would say we're probably a contender, maybe Nine a front wins. runner. We'll see the, th the three, three dots bamboos. not coming down. Let's see, which is good because we're not ready for it. Nine bamboos. If we draw a keeper before five bamboos, let's say before 55 five tiles, bamboos. we may be okay Why as a front runner. I would say we're probably a contender because we're not drawing. Two so characters. we're trailing behind with every pick. South wind. It's hard to tell because our two Three opponents wind. are are concealed and one opponent has only one exposure. So it's very one difficult character. to tell what people are playing. One thing is for sure. Someone, I don't think anyone is playing wins. Two characters. And it looks like nobody's playing a year hand. So two categories are Seven out. characters. And it looks like One a lot of big wind. odds are out. West wind. We're at 55 tiles and ha we still don't have a keeper. Seven bands. I would say we're a contender. Eight characters. So we should take moderate risks. Red dragon. There's a keeper. Seven okay, dots. so I would say now we jumped up to front runner. Seven characters. Because we could pong now. We're set. And Nine it's still characters. the middle game. So you can bump yourself up pong. or back, depending on how well you draw. And that's where the luck is. So Six we got lucky, bamboos. we picked a joker, we got our keeper, and we're ready to win now. Flower. And we're ready on a double weight. We can win with a three dot or a five. So I would say that confirms our position as a front runner. Two characters. It's not a guarantee, but we're ready to win before Five the characters. the end of the middle wall, which is ideal. Seven bamboos. And we can win Eight with win. a joker too nine dots so since if anyone was paying attention and they saw us discard a flower they're gonna know we need a three or a five in dots nine dots west wind this is where you see if if people are playing to win this player to the left, discard, or they have a, a pure Kong. Six They're bamboos. probably playing to win with a, with a late North exposure. Wind. East wind. The other two players we don't know about yet. Four dots. They got a joker. Flower. Okay, so they threw a flower in the end game. They're probably playing Three to win because that's risky. I would play to win. Two dots. Joker would be nice. Three five dot would be nice. Kong. All right. Three so we have characters. we have a two three four. No, they're not doing two three one two. Three characters. They're doing one two three four. Pong Kong Pong Kong. Nine bamboos. Nine dots. They're doing one two three four. One Six dot, characters. three bam is what they need. Five bamboo. Oh, darn it. I was hoping that was it. One bamboo. Kong. We got skipped. White dragon. Okay. Last Six one. Six characters. We got the keeper. Mahjong. Three, four, five, six, Pung Kong, Pung Kong, handle least resistance. And we did have jokers that helped. Over here, one, two, three, four, they had a risky discard. Over here, like numbers with ones, and they needed that flower. <coughs> Excuse me. Seven, eight, nine, mixed soup Kongs, two discards. So I hope 
that you enjoyed this live stream. It is, it was, we ended on a high note. So I'm, I'm excited. That was a nice, a nice gift. It was a win. But any Mahjong is good Mahjong, right? Any win is a good win. Thanks for being here for this live stream. I hope you found it helpful. If you missed the beginning of this session, there's a presentation on calculating risks. So I hope that you rewatch or watch the repost and let me know what you think about the presentation and the content because we talk about calculating risks. Don't forget to look in the video description below for links to the skills and strategies matrix and also the risk assessment matrix that can help you if you are trying to learn how to assess your position in the game and also calculate risks thanks so much for being here moderators thank you for helping monitor the chat we'll be back again on wednesday for the obsessed let's play live stream then we'll be, I'll do a Wright Patterson Mahjong Let's Play on Thursday, and we'll be back for Simply Social Let's Play live stream on Saturday, uh, Friday night. I will not be here on next Wednesday because I have family coming into town this weekend, and they're, they'll be here on Monday. So there won't be nitty gritty Let's Play live streams on Monday. Otherwise, after that, we'll be on our regular schedule. I appreciate you being here. If anyone has any questions, write them in chat before I log off. Otherwise, I will sign off if nobody has any questions. All right. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.